seems like I told our young man afterwards uh, a couple of emotions. One, certainly disappointment. We felt like going into the game, uh, we expected to win, and, and uh, obviously that did not happen. And, and uh, uh, you know, I was uh, proud of our young man and, and certainly everyone in our program on the sideline, even though we fell behind by 23 points early on. Uh, no one panicked. Uh, ended up making some plays right before half to get us back in it. And again, had an opportunity uh, with the football with a couple minutes left in the game to have a chance to go down and, and tie it. And obviously, they get it done. So, uh, with disappointment, I felt like uh, uh, you know, we could gain some some confidence, if you will, uh, uh, from that game for a number of reasons. I thought we saw uh, a great improvement in a number of individuals, a number of areas, and, and again, uh, when I referenced a minute ago, going on the road against the top 25 team, uh, tough place to play, and, and uh, digging ourselves a hole, but uh, uh, continuing to fight back and, and try to climb out of it and, and uh, make some plays, uh, I think we can uh, we, we, uh, show I think some guys gained some confidence individually and, and service some units did uh, as well by the way they battled back and, and performed. So uh, good to be back home. Another uh, tough uh, test this week with UNLV coming to town. Uh, it's a team that went to a bowl game last year. And it's a veteran uh, program, and uh, you know I think I've said this before. Every every team we face presents different challenges, uh, and this is a team very athletic. They play extremely hard. Uh, offensively, they are balanced. They're rushing for about 150 yards a game and, and throwing for about 250. And uh, uh, we've got some really talented young men and, and a lot of uh, a number of talented young men from uh, not only the state of Texas but from, from Houston as well. So uh, Devontae Davis, a uh, senior receiver from North Shore, uh, 6'3", 215 pounds. Seems like yesterday we had him at camp as a junior in high school and now he's already a senior in college and has had a tremendous career. Uh, I think one of the best receivers, not only certainly statistically, but uh, when you watch the film, one of the best receivers in the United States. And, uh, has great hands, tremendous ball skills, great body control, is very, very physical and very strong. Uh, the comparison actually reminds me uh, to Deontay on video, he's a little bit uh, heavier and Deontay, but uh, again, they, they target him, they bunch in the games, and he goes up and makes plays with two hands and sometimes with one hand, but uh, uh, the vast majority of the time, Deontay is coming out of football. So a talented group of wideouts, um, and then uh, they try to establish their own as well. Uh, Keith Whiteley, another young man uh, from the greater Houston area, uh, younger than Devontae, but uh, he's played a bunch for him at running back, and is there Probably return and kickoff return. So, uh, you know, offensively they've got some some weapons, and defensively, <coughs> uh, uh, again, a veteran group, um, bigger than you typically see. <coughs> Excuse me, their defensive backs, uh, their corners, six foot corners, uh, very physical, have great cover skills, and uh, uh, their uh, the front set are very active D line linebackers. So, uh, again, it'll be a great challenge. Glad to be back home. And uh, as we continue to say, and will not change this week, um, it'll be uh, about us and executing our game plan offensively, defensively, and on special teams. And I think we look back, uh, and one more thing that sticks out in this last game is are the turnovers. We created defensively three big turnovers. We did not turn it over on offense. The last two games, and we're plus seven uh, turnover margin. So I think we're getting back on track where we need to be in terms of defensively taking the balls away, making plays, and, and offensively uh, taking care of the football. Coach, do they, uh, does UNLV present a tempo or pace issue against defense? They do. They uh, they don't huddle. And sometimes they will check from the sideline and, and get a play relayed in while they're staying in formation. But uh, uh, they run a lot of plays. They're up-tempo. And, uh, again, they're balanced. They'll, they'll throw a quick game. They'll get uh, their quarterback. Blake Deck gets the ball out of his hands extremely quickly. Uh, and uh, again, they've established the running game. So, uh, you know, offensively, with what they do for us defensively, we've got to be make sure our young men know the game plan extremely well to get lined up uh, quickly, similar to, uh, to what BYU did offensively in terms of the tempo. 
So it's more of a get guys out in space and then let them do what they do. Uh, that is correct. Yeah, they list they list uh, two receivers on their depth charts, but you'll see them in, in a, a level called ten personnel with one back and four receivers out there. So uh, two of their top four receivers aren't even listed on their depth chart, but uh, uh, they play a lot of wideouts and uh, uh, again they try to spread the field, throw the ball down the field quite quite a bit. How you mentioned Devontae, does that dramatically change how you approach this game? Uh, it could. I mean, he, uh, uh, again, so this six months who was one of the top receivers in the country. Um, and, and again, not only is one of the top receivers in the country, but, but uh, uh, he's a guy they throw the ball to quite a bit. So uh, it's been proven on video, it's been proven statistically, so we know that going into this game.
bearing weight and whether we're ahead or behind at halftime, uh, the message can stay the same. And uh, you know, I'm big on uh, whether you're a coach on the sideline or a manager or a trainer. Uh, everyone's calm and everyone communicates and, and, and really stays focused on, on the task at hand because I feel like student athletes will feed off of uh, the coaches and staff members and they panic and, and feel like they can say that uh, among the young men. So we, we, uh, we try not to do that. Something certainly we talk about during the week as well. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, I mean, not to reference the question again, but I think even if you're ahead by a number of points early, you've got to Make sure you don't you don't relax as well. And, uh, you know, given the choice, we certainly would not like to fall behind in these games. And I think the uh, second pass is something we need to uh, uh, improve on. Like to have a couple of throws back uh, that he'd like to make a play on. Uh, 
had a couple too many drops. I think uh, so first and foremost for for his liking, but uh, uh, he's playing. He is playing extremely well. He plays extremely hard. Again, you know, one of our team captains, and uh, you know, said it over and over. One of our most improved players from a couple of years ago is now after having made the switch from from running back to uh, to receiver. You mentioned special teams the other day, just in terms of um, moving forward stuff. Uh, I don't know if it's an indicator on, on the depth chart, but uh, any plans in terms of how you address that, whether it's holding or the, some of the blocking packages on the field personnel, that kind of stuff? Yes, and, and uh, talking about special teams, and that um, you know, began to be addressed Sunday evening in our practice. Uh, the depth is probably not updated, but I won't be until till, uh, tomorrow or Thursday. Uh, and whether it's guys uh, in a return game, in terms of blocking, uh, guys in our coverage units, or, or uh, possibly uh, uh, more competition at a uh, punter or a holder, uh, you know, that's yet to be finalized, but it's something we uh, took a hard look at. And, uh, on Sunday night, you know, I probably should have mentioned a couple of so UNLV uh, is got as good a special teams uh, as anyone in the country. The punter is outstanding. Uh, they take the ball off uh, all over the field. They get great depth. Their the kicker is actually listed as a kicker slash linebacker that runs down and might be their leading tackle on kickoff. So, uh, and they're outstanding in the return game as well. So it'll be uh, that'll be something we. Uh, need to get fixed this week and show me how it will work. Could you talk to, um, as you, the program goes forward, when you look at the opposition's roster, they have fewer and fewer Texas and Houston kids that they're here instead? Um, so again? You mentioned that UNLV has a lot of Houston and Texas mm -hmm. kids. Can you talk to, as this program goes forward, that doesn't happen so much. That the opposition doesn't have those types of moves right. because you have them. Right. No, that's a good question. And uh, you know, again, I think uh, it was reflected in our last recruiting class that uh, you know we're trying to do the best we can to, to recruit not only the state of Texas but some of the greater Houston area. And I think it can be uh, uh, I'm certainly happy for young men that that uh, if they choose to leave here and uh, have a successful career academically and certainly on the football field, you hate to have to play against them. And, and uh, you know, when I talk about the Keith Whiteleys and the Devontae Davises that seemed like they were just here in high school, and, and uh, you know now they've, they've gone off somewhere else. And certainly, there's, there's many. Uh, I don't know if this goes without saying how many you know, programs are in the state of Texas. But um, I think it speaks volumes as to what kind of student athletes there are in the state of Texas. It's certainly the Greater Houston area that, that the other programs can come in and, and uh, recruit the young men out of here. And, and, Great careers. So, uh, but again, with our program, we're, we are really focused on uh, Greater Houston, uh, this part of Texas, and, and, uh, and showed up and, and, uh, and who we signed in terms of where they're from last year's recruiting class. You know, Bob, we have a 